So what the Black is Beautiful initiative is a call to basically all the craft breweries to participate in a stout base that we created. And using that stout base, they can get cre as creative as they want. But basically what this beer is, is to represent equality and inclusion for people of color. The breweries that have been involved are going to brew beer. They use a particular label and then release this beer. And then all of the proceeds will either go to uh, local foundations or organizations that support police brutality reform and uh, legal offenses. So we got uh, various breweries rep represented here who have brewed or will be brewing Black is Beautiful. I think we looked at the website recently, it's probably over a thousand breweries, right? Oh wow. Uh, 50 states represented, 20 countries. This is the beer that started all this, this is the Weathered Souls, this is the OG one, uh, oh. the, base, the base recipe. So oh, this is the nice. yeah, this is the original batch for Marcus. So for cheers. 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 Shout out Marcus. Yeah. Did you guys stray from this a lot in your recipes? I'm not gonna lie, I would have gone a little bit more off the beaten path. I thought I was breaking the rules by by just kind of doing like adjacent grains. So like instead of two row, I did Marisadric, because that's what I like. And like, uh, we did like Grease Extra Special instead of Crystal. Um, and then I uh, did a little bit of a deep bitter, some deep bittered malts instead of some of the more bitter uh, ones that were on there. Just to kind of change things up a little bit. And then and then I noticed people were doing just straight like barrel aged beers and uh, yeah, these guys. Uh -huh. Straight barely beers. <laughs> <laughs> um, we made the we made the beer, just some of it. You yeah, know. yeah, yeah. So before we, you know, we knew, we knew that we were allowed to go buck wild. Uh, I tried to stay somewhat adjacent to the original recipe. As a homebrew, I'd be like, oh, paint by numbers. This is great. I can just plug and play. Did you got were you guys comfortable with doing it, or were there any challenges trying trying to copy someone else's recipe? I think anytime you're operating on a system that's not like what it was produced on. There's a little bit of question marks in terms of will it come out how it was intended, but you know, s s scaling, scaling, you know, every every brewer should kind of know their own system well enough to do so. And I, th I think that the examples I've had have shown that. Hey guys, I'm Eric Flores. Uh, this is Victor Navarro. I'm the head brewer over at Whiskey Hill. This guy's my assistant brewer over there. We joined in on the Black is Beautiful initiative. We did a really huge Russian Imperial Stout using the same base recipe, but we kind of tweaked it a tiny bit, gave it a little touch, up the percentage of flaked oats. We boiled for a nice long nine hours to kind of get a really good caramelization of the malt, malt sugars going on in there get that nice viscosity. We're planning on adding a uh, ton of roasted hazelnut and a bunch of vanilla bean too. So our charity is uh, My Block, My Hood, My City in Chicago, who helps um, children in underprivileged areas kind of find better opportunities towards education. Kind of hits home for me and Victor growing up on the far south side of Chicago, where um, opportunities weren't as plenty as a lot of other neighborhoods are. And uh, it's a little more difficult to make it to college. So anything we can do in the brewing industry to kind of help that cause I think is a worthy cause to donate to. So really excited for the beer, really excited to be part of the project. Cheers. Cheers. I tried to stay as true to the recipe as possible. I only um, kind of came off the path a little bit just dialing up the flake dotes percentage a lot higher and I accidentally boiled for nine hours too. So <laughs> I just kinda like really took a nap. <laughs> <laughs> and it yielded a lot thicker beer, got a really good caramelization of all the malt sugars too. So it has like a beautiful, nice just super dark brown lingering head to it too. We, had, we actually had the privilege of interviewing Marcus and you know one of the things is you know and especially as brewers I'm sure you guys know you're constantly busy your days are just packed um, and, <laughs> and uh, you know he felt like he needed to do something right and he you know this is what he wanted to do. How do you guys like feel about you know breweries um, getting involved in social issues. I think it's great. I think it's an important thing. Some people might say stick in your lane, right? But um, how do you feel about that? Like breweries get involved in, in social movements. You kind of have to uh, look at it like it, it is our lane because we've got customers from all walks of life mm -hmm. that come into our breweries. You know, we, you know, just at Black Horizon, uh, we're, you know, 
know, out in the western suburbs here, First, First Amendment rights, you get to say whatever you want to say, and, but you know, you have to deal with the repercussions of that. So you may lose part of your customer base because of it, but you know, at least you feel that you've said something. You've, you've exercised your right. You said how you feel, and that will be damned if, yeah. if, yeah. if you know, <laughs> it's negative repercussions, right. but it, it, at well, least you still got to, you know, exercise your right. So yeah, we, we do get to participate in that. The athletes participate in it, politicians, of course, participate in it. So why not? It's just part of the process. And being small, you know, it, it's different if you're a, a national chain or a regional brand, you know, as a microbrewery, you know, at our size, I think our collective size, like, you are very much a part of the community and the people that come into your establishment are like are part of your local community and it's an inclusive environment like to its core and I, I think if you know we we can't say how we feel you know what 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 what's the point because the whole thing is camaraderie and like vibe and uh but we're you know. people just like anybody else right we have our yeah. own feelings and our own opinions yeah. and Absolutely. you know while I'm, I'm a big proponent for not talking politics or religion at the bar, generally. No. You know? yeah. Oh, for sure. <laughs> you know, we all have things that we care about, and we want to, you know, make sure that. You know, and this is a human issue too. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's a human I mean, this issue. is this is about the the communities that, are, you know, that are around us all the time. I mean, if we don't support them, you it's, know, who are we? It shouldn't <laughs> yeah. necessarily like influence buying decisions either. Right. I, I don't think you know, the, the kind of person that would hear your viewpoint and say, "I'm never going back there again." Is you know, that's pretty big. That's pretty bold. I wouldn't do that. There's you know, there's lots of good product out there that I would you know purchase. You know, places I would patronize even if I didn't completely agree with you know but the, the stance it. they had taken. Have yeah, you we, heard we, it? Ha we have. We've heard it. it. We've yeah. had people yeah. tell as soon as we tell them who we're donating our proceeds to, they say, "Never mind." That's why I bring it up. It's I'm like shocked, holy shit. <laughs> Can I swear? Yeah. On this? yeah. <laughs> it's like I, holy I, shit. <laughs> Brewers come out and say they're super excited for brewing this beer, and then all of a sudden you get these like Facebook comments or or whatever, just saying you're just pandering. You know, like. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys dig deep into Facebook comments or groups or anything like that, or do you generally steer clear? I don't think because that's a that's a dangerous like road to go down. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or it's like um, <laughs> untapped, untapped reviews. Yeah. Yeah. You just ignore them and you keep doing what you're doing. You right. keep making good beer. Yeah. You, you keep bringing great people into the bar. That's basically what it comes down to. Danger the trolls will that. will yeah. fall yeah. off, yeah. or, or they'll wind up coming back. I'm with Paul. Like I said, I, I typically stray away from any kind of political or or religion or anything like that that could deeply offend somebody, but. Now, as Emily said, this is like a legit human issue, where like it shouldn't you shouldn't have to think about it. Like yeah. it's no brainer. The, the, yeah, <laughs> it, it's 100 percent a no brainer. The the beer is it says on the side of every can it's brewed for to promote and bring light to social injustices and and uh, promote equality. So that's it's a human issue. It's it, it's not politics. Like it should be a no brainer. The sad part is, is that if anyone thinks otherwise, like that's that's the sad part. Right. Uh, that the fact that we're in 2020 and anyone thinks that this is anything like they have that. an issue with this. Like, yeah. Right. So yeah, and then, and then you have to ask, right. why do you have an issue with it? Right. Why, why are you Why are you yeah. getting upset because I'm donating money to a cause? And again, it's not about gaining or losing customers, but I mean, there are just as many people who will identify with what you're doing and support it. So, Absolutely. you know, if you lose those people because they aren't all for equality, which seems just unbelievable right. to me that people would still feel that way. It's just like, kind of like, all right, see ya, that's fine. I didn't kind of want that element in my brewery or as part of my brand anyway, so it's kind of separating the wheat from the chaff anyway. My name is Ricky, I'm with Foreign Exchange Brewing Company. I'm here because uh, I brew Black is Beautiful. I was uh, one of the first breweries to jump on board uh, in Illinois, I believe, and uh, I'm really proud of that. We tweaked our base recipe a little bit on our version and uh, also aged ours on uh, Ugandan coffee from our friends at Enduro Coffee. Also aged it on uh, both Ghana and Mexican cacao, as well as a little bit of a Saigon cinnamon to it. Ours has a little bit of a roastiness, big, big uh, burst of coffee flavor, and it uh, finishes nice, crisp, clean, you know, really reminiscent of uh, a lot of the things that uh, Church Street is known for, so it incorporates a lot of elements from both breweries. Thank you guys for inviting me out, and I uh, hope you guys like the beer. Cheers. Coffee's really nice. The cinnamon is perfect. It's like a little dash of cinnamon, like the perfect amount. A little sizzle. Right there. Yeah, yeah, a little sizzle. Yeah, it comes together as a nice concert. It kind of the palate at the end there too and then goes away. It doesn't like stay too long and yeah. it's not too overpowering either. This is a collaboration with Church Street. <laughs> so um, Church Street was very much all about making a, 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 a quote unquote summer stout. The inspiration that it takes from what I normally do is just a big burst of flavor. Um, big burst and balance of flavors whereas Church Street wanted to do a very you know easy drinking, crushable, uh, and also still 10% ABV. Summer stout is, as they like to refer to it as. It's a really good representation of what both of us do as breweries. 
But to be fair, it did find some kind of middle ground too. Like I wouldn't call this like something you have three ounces of and you're like, all right, I'm done for. Like I oh, feel like sure. it can have a good, yeah. Yeah. like a 12 ounce pour of it. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. Maybe 16, yeah. maybe 20. Yeah, if you want, we can, go, we can shotgun some of these in the parking lot. Oh, I'm about it. What have I ever said no to you? <laughs> <laughs> so with co coffee and beer, obviously, we love the pairing. It's my favorite. It's just interesting how obsessed you guys get. It's just, this is why I was like a beer drinker as a fan. How obsessed you guys get with coffee, finding the perfect bean, working with the roaster that you want to work with, and it seems like everything says something about you or who you're collaborating with, and just obsessing over that perfect bean or blend or whatever. Yeah, different roasts, different nibs coming from the different places. Parallel with like grain, you know, it's all flavor profiles. All the little things that make all the difference to it too. What's the process for? marrying up coffee with a style. When I chose to work with Indiro, it was first, of all, first and foremost because they were like ultra local. Uh, they had been really big supporters of, of the brewery even before it was a legitimate brewery. But also too, like their coffee had showcased a lot of the flavors that I was exhibiting in a lot of my stouts. And the one that I work with is, is uh, has a lot of chocolate to it. So like that played a big part and I basically designed a beer around that coffee. I feel like any good brewer, they establish, they, they, they identify the coffee they want to use first in terms of the flavor profile that coffee brings to the table and then they decide if they want to use it in, if that's complementary to the stout that it's going into. Hi, I'm Paul Slayton. And I'm Emily Slayton. And we're from Skeleton Key Brewery, uh, and we are here today to join the Midwest Brewer Review guys along with a bunch of our other buddies in the industry to help promote our Black is Beautiful beer. We collaborated with Liquid Love Brewing um, up in Buffalo Grove. We did it as a mixed two pack. So our side of things was done with sweet plantains and toasted coconut, and their side of things was done with smuggler's coffee, vanilla, and cacao nibs. Just like everybody else um, in the initiative are donating 100% of our proceeds from the beer to uh, two organizations we're splitting it between. Uh, one is My Block, My Hood, My City. It provides uh, programming for underprivileged youth in the city of Chicago. And then the other half of our proceeds is gonna be going to the Center for Black Equity, which uh, supports the black LGBTQ uh, plus community. Now, these are a couple of things that we are, we're very passionate about. We've always worked uh, a lot with the LGBT community, so we're really happy to get to include that in this as well. Um, and we are thrilled to be here with these guys today to taste some of these beers and talk about how important it is. Yeah, that's that's plantain. That's like sweet plantains. This is amazing. Is this the banana one? That's yeah. That's cool. I have found that to be, like Hazel and I, I found it to be a very challenging ingredient to put in a beer in general. We wanted to use plantains for a long time. For a long time, yeah. yeah. It's always been like a, a favorite, favorite food of mine um, and then of course, you know, your grandparents, when they come into town, would always make plantains. I'm Cuban, like, so plantains are huge in everything. Plantains are life. Family. And yeah, we we wanted to do it for a long time. It was 150 pounds of uh, baked sweet plantains wow. and 45 pounds, pounds of toasted coconut. Yes. And I'll be interested to know if you guys get the coconut. Because oh, I get. I totally get the coconut. Do you see? I'm the only one who hasn't tasted it. I, I get it on the nose. Like, I think right so. Away. I'm also the one who actually coconut. toasts the coconut. Like I stand in front of the oven, oh, stirring yeah. the coconut and toasting it. I think that I just have permanent coconut in my nose. He is, he is. He's <laughs> scooping the raw coconut out of the sheets. I'm oh, Mexican. My grandma used to make uh Fried plantains and yeah. she sprinkle sugar on top, yeah. and that was like my favorite like Sunday morning yeah, snack. It's just I get like flashbacks of that. Like it's nice. as if she made that for me, and then it fell into a glass of stout. <laughs> <laughs> when we first smelled it, it was like almost getting like a chocolate covered banana kind of yeah. thing from it, you know. And then there's a little bit of that caramelization, I think, from the plantains that yeah. kind of comes through to give it that extra sweetness. I do feel like I get a little bit of the coconut. I think that it is hiding behind a lot of the, you know, the, the flavor, the plantain, the stout, yeah. the milk sugar, but I think that it's definitely there. I, I do. Hi, my name is Charles St. Clair. I'm one of the co-owners of Black Horizon Brewing Company out here in Willowbrook, Illinois. I'm here to talk about our Black is Beautiful beer. Our take on it is a rye um, imperial stout, about 8.7%, dark malt, rye, spice, uh, mild cocoa, and uh, coffee. Charity that we're donating it to is called By the Hand Club, and it's a, it's a Chicago-based um, club for, after-school club for kids, and what they've actually done is they built a, elementary school and they built a middle school out in Austin uh, for the uh, underprivileged kids and pretty much anybody any kid is uh, eligible any kid in Chicago is eligible to go to the school and I've done some volunteer work there they, they really did something cool with some of the athletes from some of the Chicago sports teams all the athletes got together and they purchased a liquor store that's right next to the by the hands club building and what they're doing is they're tearing down that liquor store in its place they're going to put a 
open air food mart. So they're gonna have uh, fresh vegetables, um, things from local vendors. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a pretty cool uh, concept. And the executive director of By the Hand Club is Danita Travis. Fantastic woman, her staff is wonderful. I've been to the elementary school and I've seen uh, how the kids are, are taught. It's a great uh, opportunity for anybody that gets involved in it. So that is where our 100% of our funds from all of these, and not just the, uh, the one, the can version, but from all of the Black is Beautiful beers that we do. Made some modification with what we had on hand, but he did add the flaked rye to it. So you'll, you'll probably get the bite of that. The spiciness of the flake dry. And there's no adjuncts other than just... That's it, just nice. Yeah. But you said you plan on doing like a cheesecake yeah, style. Yeah, we're going to do it. <laughs> or like vanilla, throughout the year. Vanilla raspberry yeah, cheesecake. Uh, also. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that rye would have would have uh, made a difference, but it, it's it's also slightly less better than the original. Yeah. I agree. Um, yeah. If you said that you went like straight recipe, just mixed in some rye. What I'm trying to get, get to though is that it's very smooth. It's a great imperial style. The rye that like, comes through in like the very, 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 very end, it's like a very, very subtle spice. It's not super prominent. That's the only thing I can identify, but uh, yeah, it's just a great, well-rounded I, I hate to say it because it's my own. I could really get after this because it's, <laughs> it's it's not cloying. It's not heavy. It's not It also sweet. went eight, seven, you said, Kim? Eight, seven. Eight, seven. Eight, yeah. seven. Yeah, Summer so style. yeah, it's, it's it's something you can drink <laughs> yeah, a, 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 a couple, at least a couple of pints of, I, I believe. It's a very scientific term. I like to call this very shotgunnable. Mm -hmm. yeah. shotgun <laughs> Foreshadowing. Scientific <laughs> Let's shotgun those stouts. Oh my god, that's what we're gonna do in the parking lot. You're not wrong. <laughs> I was just wondering what you guys are doing, actively doing outside of the beer to promote inclusivity as far as you know, whether you're in different groups or whether it's through your marketing or your artwork or even the styles of beer you're making to, you know, bring everyone together. As we get into, we're, we're working on an expansion right now. Um, we're actually gonna be busting through that wall right over there and we're putting in a second tap room. And as part of that, we will be hiring more staff. And something that we have prioritized is really making sure that that hiring process is inclusive and that we are promoting you know, opportunities for that. We, in the past, have run an incubator program where we've helped breweries get off the ground. In addition to that, we've helped a number of breweries that are existing now just with their licensing and things like that. Continuing with those efforts, of course, but also in terms of hiring for that, in terms of the incubator program, just sort of making sure that we are promoting that in a way that encourages people um, from diverse backgrounds to apply, to be a part of that, and to prioritize that. That's been a big part of it. And we're now currently working with another organization that does storytelling events, which can be a really powerful way for people of all different sorts of backgrounds to tell their story. And sometimes that's the most human way for people to really understand. I mean, it's, I don't know, social media, all this stuff where it's like this, misappropriated content and it's twisted around. There's nothing truer than hearing the words come from someone's mouth of somebody who's experienced it. And so that has been something that we're trying to figure out how to do in this because we can't do live events. So we're, tr we're working through that. We're trying to figure out how to make it accessible to a larger audience um, and make sure that we're speaking to everybody because that's how that message gets out. That's how people get to share their story with more people. I'm sad that we haven't gotten to do it. You know, we had to cancel our last one because it, yeah. literally we had it scheduled for, I think it was March 22nd. It was March 22nd. You know, the, the weekend of the, the lockdown. And uh, we're, we're very excited for things to open back up again so we can start doing stuff like that again. Yeah. We don't have a physical location yet, um, but we're already making strides to essentially become a community partner. Um, in Aurora. We're very Aurora proud and uh, so one of, part of the profits that are, or the proceeds from this beer are going to uh, to restore Aurora. When uh, when there was a protest and riots in Aurora, a bunch of businesses were destroyed. 100% of them were small businesses. Um, so that fund goes back to helping rebuild Aurora. And on top of that too, also the, the uh, Legal Defense Fund too. Becoming a community partner, uh, reaching out to other small businesses and kind of making sure that we are all, making sure that we're all together, working together to essentially make our community a better place. Um, that's always been a, a huge priority of foreign exchange and uh, I'm very proud of that. Uh, thanks for having me. My name is AJ. I'm here uh, representing Miskatonic Brewing Company out of Darien, Illinois, right down the road uh, from here. We were really excited to jump on to the uh, Black is Beautiful initiative as soon as we uh, heard about it. It is an issue that's been uh, near and dear to our hearts for you know longer than, than uh, certainly the political turmoil going on 
uh, in the country right now, but uh, seeing uh, seeing the initiative formed in like a concrete way, and then not only that, but having so many people jump onto it uh, all at once uh, made kind of us very proud to be part of a, a kind of a local community, especially in the craft sector that is very progressive and, and you know want, wants to kind of bring some of these issues to light and support our peers. So uh, we were really excited to, to hop on it right away, and uh, we chose to actually put uh, most of the liquid we made down in uh, barrels for a future release, so we're doing kind of a two-part thing. Uh, proceeds from that will go to the uh, NAACP Legal Defense Fund, which was a uh, organization uh, uh, that we thought would be a good kind of literal translation of uh, you know a donation to to output. Uh, the beer itself is a uh, kind of a blend of uh, old barrel stock that we had uh, sitting around in our barrel cellar in Darien uh, with, with fresh stuff inspired by uh, the recipe at uh, Weathered Souls. So we took uh, elements from, from two previously brewed imperial style batches that we uh, really, really liked, you know, barrels that we thought had really good barrel character, really good vanilla, uh, what have you. And we uh, kind of said, what, what can we do to uh, make the best possible sort of uh, triangulated product? And uh, we made a huge imperial stout to blend in with the uh, kind of older, um, more high ABV stuff. And I think what came out was a really nice example of a, of a blended barrel aged stout. And we're really excited to have that available to the public. Again, thanks for having me. We're at a place where we can't make, you know, 20 barrels of imperial stout and have them take it in the summer during the COVID time. So we knew we could put some down in barrels and have some fresh and we thought it'd be fun to blend it. And really it was more about getting some funding in the right hands and also making a beer we were really proud of. We beefed up the original recipe from Weathered Souls a little bit and um, used our house strain, which is admittedly not American either. We use a, a British strain from Omega in the city of Chicago, who also um, uh, donated the yeast for, for the project, which is really nice. It's, it's been really cool. The whole thing has been super collaborative. The barrels we got from a company, uh, a Midwest Barrel Company. Oh, you got their head uh, on that, uh, that uh, donated uh, uh, Willet barrels at cost, which was fabulous. Well, this is a great way to wrap things up as far as our lineup goes. Yeah. This has got a nice boozy punch. Yeah, yeah, nice job. Thank Thank you. You. This is wonderful. Beautiful. I like this. Yeah, it's, it's so beautifully aromatic. Like if you've ever steamed a bourbon barrel to just kind of bring yeah. it to life a little bit, so, this is exactly what the room smells like afterwards. It's like beautiful burnt sugar and kind of light caramel, it's really funny. subtle oakiness. I've noticed that like your barrel aged stouts are not always like the thickest or biggest, but like they all have the most incredible barrel aroma mm -hmm. of like some of the, like out of most of the Midwest barrel aged stouts, Yours have some of the best barrel aroma of any I smell, like vanilla, caramelized sugar, oak, and like I get that in this one. And, Thank you. I mean, obviously Aww. it's it's yeah. Yeah, I love Mr. Tonic. <laughs> <laughs> We're just about out of stouts. I uh, just want to say thank you again for everyone who came here tonight and thank you again for all the Illinois breweries and everyone who participated in this program. Do you guys have anything to add before we wrap this? Thanks for highlighting yeah. it, man. Yeah, yeah, much for having I had a great time. opportunity to talk Lots about it. Like, I, I just hope that more breweries get involved. That was one thing that Marcus said, like everyone's got their brewing schedules and things like that. But it was nice that a lot of um, companies jumped in and said, we'll discount do Willet barrels at cost or whatever, and hopefully people watch this and as many people, as many breweries will jump in as possible. Cheers, Marcus. Yeah, cheers, cheers to Marcus. Cheers, Marcus. Yeah, Marcus. Thanks for looking at yeah. Marcus. Cheers. Thank you, Marcus. Let's do it. Down with the <laughs> I mean, what, what else can we do to support? Like not just buying this beer, but outside of the beer community, what, what can we do? The best thing is understanding, right? Just open your ears, listen, don't rebuttal, don't butt, just listen and try to understand the perspective because you know, that's a large majority, I think, of the issue and why we're in the situations we're in now is basically the lack of respect and understanding. And I think that if we get to a common place where people just go ahead and respect that, then we're going to get a lot further than where we've been now.